Welcome to session four, where we're going to cover the critical process of applying data insights to our marketing strategies. This is where the rubber meets the road, where we turn all that data we've collected and analyzed into tangible, impactful marketing actions. So let's start with the importance of using data insights into action. It's not enough to have mountains of data or even brilliant insights, right? If we're not using them to drive our marketing decisions, we're missing the point entirely. Take Netflix, for example. They don't just collect data on what we watch, they use it to inform nearly every aspect of their business. When they decided to produce House of Cards, it wasn't a shot in the dark. They knew their users loved political dramas, they knew Kevin Spacey films performed well, and they knew David Fincher was a popular director. They combined these insights to create a show that was practically guaranteed to succeed. So let's talk about translating data insights into actionable marketing strategies. This involves using data to inform our targeting, messaging, and pricing decisions. Amazon is a master at this. Their recommendation engine isn't just a neat feature, it's a core part of their marketing strategy. By analyzing purchase history, browsing behavior, and the behavior of similar customers, they can predict with remarkable accuracy what a customer might want to buy next. This data-driven approach reportedly drives 35% of their sales. In terms of pricing, Uber surge pricing model is a prime example of data-driven decision-making. They use real-time data on driver availability and ride demand to adjust prices dynamically, incentivizing more drivers to get on the road during peak times. Moving on to data-driven content marketing and personalization. This is about using data to create and deliver content that resonates with each individual customer. Spotify's Discover Weekly Playlist is a fantastic example of this. So by analyzing your li listening history and comparing it to users with similar tastes, they create a personalized playlist each week that introduces you to new music that you're likely to enjoy. This data-driven personalization has become one of Spotify's most popular features. Another great example is Amazon's dynamic email content. They use your browsing and purchase history to populate marketing emails with products you're likely to be interested in significantly increasing click-through and conversion rates. Let's discuss optimizing marketing channels and campaigns based on data. This involves using data to decide whether to allocate our marketing budget, which channels to focus on, and how to optimize our campaigns. Airbnb has a great case study here. They use data to optimize their digital marketing spend across channels. By analyzing the performance of their ads across different platforms, they can shift budget in real time to the channels that are delivering the best ROI. They also use data to personalize their ads, showing potential guests' properties that match their previous search and booking behavior. Measuring and attributing marketing success is crucial in data-driven marketing. We need to know which of our efforts are driving results and to what extent. Google's attribution modeling in Google Analytics is a powerful tool for this. It allows marketers to compare different attribution models like last click, first click, linear, to understand how different touch points contribute to conversions. This can radically change how we make different marketing decisions. Coca-Cola provides an interesting example of marketing mix modeling. They use advanced analytics to understand how different marketing activities from TV ads to in-store promotions contribute to sales. This allows them to optimize their marketing mix for maximum impact. Finally, let's talk about continuous optimization and experimentation. In the digital age, we have the ability to test and iterate rapidly, constantly improving our marketing efforts. Booking.com is famous for their culture of experimentation. They run hundreds of A-B tests simultaneously, testing everything from the color of buttons to the wording of their property descriptions. This constant testing and optimization has allowed them to incrementally improve their conversion rates over time, leading to significant revenue gains. Another great example is the New York Times. They use multivariate testing to optimize their headline writing. So by testing multiple variations of headlines simultaneously, they can identify which ones drive the most engagement and adjust accordingly. Let's look at a comprehensive example of how all these elements come together in a data-driven marketing strategy. Take Starbucks loyalty program and mobile app. They use customer data to personalize offers and recommendations. So if you usually buy a latte in the morning, you might receive a push notification with a latte offer when you're near a Starbucks. They use location data to make these offers more relevant and timely. They optimize their marketing channels based on user behavior. So if you tend to engage more with email than push notifications, they'll prioritize email communications for you. 
They measure the success of these personalized campaigns using sophisticated attribution modeling, understanding how each touch point contributes to a purchase decision. And they're constantly testing and optimizing. They might test different offer types, timings, or messaging to see which drives the most engagement and purchases. The result is a highly engaged customer base, increased frequency of visits, and higher average order value. In fact, their mobile order and pay features, which is heavily driven by these data-driven personalization efforts, accounted for 24% of all U.S. company-operated transactions in 2020. That's significant. As we finish up, remember that applying data insights to marketing strategies isn't a one-time event. It's an ongoing process of collecting data, generating insights, taking action, measuring results, and then starting the cycle all over again. The companies that excel at this are the ones that embed this data-driven approach into their culture. They're constantly asking questions of their data, always looking for new insights and opportunities to optimize. So as you leave this session, I want you to think about your current marketing strategies. Where could you be applying data insights more effectively? What experiments could you run to optimize your efforts? How could you create a more personalized experience for your customers? Remember, in the world of data-driven marketing, standing still is moving backwards. So keep testing, keep optimizing, keep pushing the boundaries of what's possible with your marketing data. I have a fantastic worksheet for you to use to build a predictive model for customer churn. I want to make sophisticated data projects seem accessible to you. So go check that out in the micro session.